Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We have Daytona in both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series for the regular season finale as well for the Cup Series. Still a few races to go before that in the Xfinity Series. But we have some breaking news here today. Penske Racing announces that Ryan Priest will drive the two-car next season in replacement of Brad Kozlowski who moves over to Stuart Haas Racing to drive the 41-car next season. Penske will also be placing Anthony Alfredo in the Wood Brothers 21-car Leaving at least one spot open at Front Row Motorsports next season. So uh, Priest to the 2 after moving from the 21 and then Alfredo from Front Row to the 21 next season. Very excited to see how that is going to turn out. I kind of looked at Ryan Priest as the favorite to go into the 2 car just by uh, kind of watching what he was being able to do in that 21 with picking up a win earlier this season at Martinsville Speedway against drivers like myself who's had tremendous success at that paperclip now. So uh, very excited to see what that's going to be like for a driver like Ryan Ryan Priest now as we of course got a lot of drivers that are kind of considered underdogs getting good opportunities like Ryan Priest now in the two at Penske Racing and then we have Timmy Hill who's moving to Chip Ganassi Racing Tyler Reddick as well going from Richard Childress Racing to Chip Ganassi Racing so it's going to be interesting to see what goes on next season there's so many things going on with a whole bunch of driver changes some paint scheme changes of course will be here and then we'll have a potentially custom schedule in the career mode and then of course we got that fully modded dirt series with uh uh, past legends of the sports current stars including hopefully myself in that series and then of course a few content creators as well so very excited overall for next season but of course we got to finish up this regular season and get through the final 10 races in the playoffs. And here we are in the Xfinity Series race with Paul Menard behind the wheel. And Daytona, of course, qualifying towards the back of the field as usual. But him just staying on the bottom would eventually put him a little bit further up the field towards that front. It's a very interesting situation right here. Only a few races left in the regular season for the Xfinity Series. Quinn Half is the one we're really watching. He's like fourth in points, but he's outside of the playoffs because he does not have a win. So Half is in a must-win situation in the final three regular season races for the Xfinity Series to get into the playoffs now as we come through out of turns for a little bit later in this race. Menard was working his way forwards but really didn't get that far. We came through to the final lap of this race and it was Timmy Hill leading the way out of turns four in that brand new target paint scheme made by FRG Designs and sure enough down the front straight away Timmy Hill is going to come through here into the trioval to win at Daytona as Paul Menard is going to come through right behind that 66 there to finish unfortunately outside of the top 10 down there in at P12 so still two regular season races though to go here in the Xfinity series so there you see the rest of the finishing order on your screen Quinn Half down there in P17 we're really going to be keeping an eye on him in the next couple races here uh, now as we're going to jump through though into the cup series side of things here for the Daytona weekend and now to the actual regular season finale here we have already locked up the championship for the regular season for I think this will be the third time in our fourth season as well as third time in a row if I'm not mistaken here now so that's another thing is that I'm really excited to be able to potentially mod the schedule next season in the crew mode is we can definitely have some more wild card races in there and maybe we're not just dominating the points in the regular season hopefully now as we would qualify of course in last there 40th place not the effort we were looking for but the one we always expect here the coke zero sugar 400 now as we look at the rest of the qualifying order the big thing to watch ryan blaney comes into this race two points below his penske racing teammate of austin centric for the final spot in the playoffs now as they are going to battle it out for that final 16th position tonight here in the Coke Zero 400. All right, boys, nothing really matters for us tonight. We're just going to go out here and have some fun. Maybe we can get a win here and get another few playoff points, but we're already uh, in a great spot, a great regular season, and I uh, just want to thank you guys for everything, and hopefully we have a good playoff as well. There you heard myself on the radio as we're getting ready to go green here at Daytona. There you already see some big news in the stories of the race. Austin Sindrick, unapproved body modification during qualifying. He will be starting at the back of the field. So all of a sudden, the way things are right now, if it was to finish, Ryan Blaney would be back in the playoffs now. As Sindrick looks to make it into the playoffs for the first time in just his second season here. In the career mode as the green flag is out. And we are underway for the regular season finale here at Daytona International. National Speedway on the inside of that 42 of Ross Chastain just behind that 17 of Roush Fenway Racing. Roush Fenway Racing, I can confirm you're going to see an announcement from this team in the career mode somewhat soon. Probably actually in the off-season video you will see an announcement from this team and it's going to be very big for this team uh, and definitely should completely change the structure of that team and hopefully give them a lot more success here. Now as we've been kind of getting rid of a lot of small teams in the career mode season by season but 
teams like Relish Fenway, Richard Petty Motorsports and whatnot are definitely teams I want to keep and same for Front Row Motorsports who is downgrading though nonetheless now down to potentially one car at the end of the season now as we came through turn three and four up the inside of that zero two of Eric Jones there you see our rival of course of Joey Logano on the outside I was just kind of staying here on the bottom but I forced it three wide here as we go down into this triangle with Jones as well as Busher. Busher falls way back there in the middle is Kyle Larson our teammates on the far outside just behind us drafting with the 16 of Justin Haley there you see myself settling in behind Brandon Jones in that 96 car. That car should still be here next season in the career mode likely now as I haven't fully decided on it yet, but we would get past teammates of Chase Elliott and then we also got past our rival of Logano on the inside. Really had no issues with him. As you guys remember, NASCAR has announced if myself and Logano just run into each other one time for the rest of the season, we are both suspended for at least one race. So we got to be very careful around Joey Logano, especially now if we get suspended, we're going to miss a playoff race at this point, which could destroy our season and especially if it is late in the playoffs. So I'm going to be doing everything possible to stay away from that 22 car now as we came through down this back straightaway on lap 5. Now actually going 3 wide in the middle. We had help from our Hendrick Motorsports teammate of Alex Bowman. Last season we came into this race. Bowman, we actually pushed him to victory to get his first win on the season and get him into the playoffs. This time around, quite a bit different. He's already got two wins. He is comfortably inside the playoffs and he does not have to worry here tonight at Daytona now as we have all of the Hendrick cars comfortably inside the playoffs. Larson just recently went Winning last episode, picking up his second win on the season. The only Hendrick driver to not win this season is Chase Elliott, which is still a huge surprise, but he will be in the playoffs with no problems at all. He's had a strong season in points, just hasn't been able to win. Bubba Wallace right now up there in P3 currently. He is comfortably inside the playoffs. He will advance as well. William Byron in the 88 car, our affiliate teammate, leads the way. He will also make it into the playoffs tonight here in Daytona. So very cool to see that really all these Hendrick uh, cars and Hendrick affiliated cars making it into the playoffs. Now, as we came through, though, on lap 7 out of turn 2, I finally got the opportunity to drop back down to that bottom line behind that 14 there of Chase Briscoe. We were for a few laps, but now just running behind the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Here was something I never thought I would see. Look it up in front of us. It's all single file from 1st to probably 10th, 11th, 12th or something like that. So I was very surprised to see this is a very rare sight here. Usually they're at least 2 by 2 but no, they were single file here with 3 laps to go in stage 1, but on the straightaways they kind of spread out a little bit, but they would start to get double file again as we came through to two laps to go in the stage but once they were single file like that I really couldn't do anything so I was stuck behind Stenhouse there in P14 but now with these final couple laps underway it started to get a little more action packed and we would dive up the inside of Stenhouse here down the back straightaway with a lap and a half to go with Zane Smith and the McLaren who's in a must win situation to advance into the playoffs currently leads away into turns three and four Noah Gregson as well in a must win situation running in P2 here as we came through now turns one and out of turns two on this final lap of stage at one of the inside of Brad Kozlowski in that two car. Moving over to Stuart Haas racing next season there as you see the Red Bull of Casey Kane up there in the top 10 right now having a solid run here in this first and opening stage. Casey Kane will not return to Red Bull racing next season. I have not decided who's going to go in that car but definitely uh, stay tuned for that one now as we come through to turn four passing that two of Kozlowski and it's going to be Zane Smith leading the way down the front straight away as I try to side draft the 48 coming through the triangle but it's not going to be enough to get into the top 10 there we have to settle for p11 here in stage one as uh, zane smith and the mclaren gets the first stage of victory here today at daytona definitely was feeling pretty good about the car at this point here as we were getting ready to come into the pit lane for an obvious call of two cans feel as well as four fresh tires you're looking that top 10 cole custer ryan priest Derek kraus all some kind of underdog names up there having some good runs right now here as we look towards the bottom of the order so ryan blaney and austin Cindric did not get any points so that still keeps Cindric in the playoffs by two points over his teammate of ryan blaney here as we gain one spot and get ready to go green for the start of stage two from the 10th starting position as a green flag is up for the final time in the regular season. We're going to go through into the amp segment here at Daytona.
there you have the amp segment here from Daytona International Speedway in the regular season finale tonight as we go down into turns one down in P13 there uh, as I should probably mention amp will return next season and I definitely want to try and get maybe a new logo made for that and whatnot uh, a lot of of course big changes like I said coming next season I'm probably at the end of the season going to take maybe a two or three day break from the career mode still have content rolling out of course but just give me a few extra days to really put a whole bunch of effort into getting this next season to be the greatest season ever of the career mode now as we come through turn three side by side with the 0-2 McLaren of Eric Jones into the back of the 41 a cold Custer there a bit of a checkup as Denny Hamlin kind of cut his nose off and now all of a sudden here we are three wide for a brief moment with help from the 14 of Chase and Briscoe now as I'm going to get down to that bottom between the 78 of CJ McLaughlin as well as Christopher Bell here just in front of myself now as we, there is only 10 laps in stage two so you really don't have a lot of time and of course with us being on that outside for the restart it really hurt our progress as we run P17 just about at the halfway point of the second stage. Corey LaJoy in the 32 car was out front. As you guys know, that team will not return next season in the career mode. That will be the brand new Kevin Harvick team with Cole Custer behind the wheel in that 29 car in the Cup Series next season. But maybe you could see a guy like Corey LaJoy actually hop into the car right beside me right now, and that's the 82 uh, Red Bull car currently driven by Casey Kane. Definitely could see him potentially make that move here as we come through to hit lap 6 of 10 here in this second stage. And now as we went down the track straight away on the 6th lap, I decided, you know what, we're going to make a 3 wide up the inside here with Priest and Christopher Bell. Bell in a must-win situation to make, the, to make it to the playoffs. Now he's uh, the only Joe Gibbs Racing driver this season without a victory, so very unfortunate for him and definitely could see him next season if he doesn't have a good run on the way out at Joe Gibbs Racing now. There's a lot of talent in the Xfinity Series for that Joe Gibbs team. we got Christian Eckes, uh, then you got Ty Gibbs as well. So a few drivers you really got to look for there that definitely want to make that move up. But then you got a guy like Denny Hamlin who could potentially be retiring soon. He's up there in age. Kevin Harvick's retiring this season from the career mode. So Hamlin could call it potentially after next season. You never know now as they were once again actually uh, single file at some points here in front of us. But now as we came through approaching three laps to go in the stage up the inside of Anthony Alfredo. They're starting to get some double file racing going again. Now as we're up to P8, Bowman behind myself there trying to get to the inside of Alfredo but decided to check up and kind of lose some ground. Now as we're three wide with Matt DiBenedetto as well as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. here to the back of that 0-2 McLaren of Eric Jones. Eric Jones having a strong run exactly when he needs it. Of course he has to win this race to make it into the playoffs but clearly showing that he has speed that is capable of at least competing for the win here today as I would actually get connected with Eric and we would just continue continue to work our way forwards in the final couple laps here of stage two now with a lap and a half to go just about to the inside of the 88 of William Byron and yes sure enough we get to the inside of the 88 of Byron Corey LaJoy continues to lead the way Gregson again in second who's had a strong run all race here so far in Daytona Anthony Alfredo in P6 just behind myself now as we just stay committed to the back of the 0-2 as we come through to start the final lap of stage two here in the regular season finale now is I mean you look around if anybody right here wins like Corey LaJoy joy that won't change the playoff picture if Gregson wins or Eric Jones wins completely changes everything in terms of drivers like Blaney who would actually now be out of the playoffs and so would Austin Sindrick It'll be interesting to see where both of those drivers finish here in just a half a lap's time to see what the playoff situation looks like between those two coming into this race only separated by two points and right behind me I do see Ryan Blaney in the picture. It's going to be interesting to see if we can get a top 10 now as we continue to push that McLaren of Eric Jones now to the inside of Gregson for the second place but out of turns four. It's Corey LaJoy leading the way as I make a three wide down the front straightaway with the 0-2 and the one car now continuing to get pushed by the 36 of Alfredo but it's not enough there. We end up settling for P4 in stage two as Corey LaJoy picks up the stage victory. So the big question is, Ryan Blaney, Austin Sendrick, well, none of them got a top 10. Blaney got P11, and I'm looking for Sendrick, and he got P20. So that still means that Sendrick is two points above the cut line going into this third and final stage. But now at this point, pretty much every position counts for points. So whoever really finishes better probably is going to get in the playoffs here because I doubt they're going to be separate by one spot so uh, Blaney though needs three positions to advance by a point over Centric so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here as we get ready to go green for the start of the third and final stage here in the regular season finale at Daytona International Speedway Corey LaJoy, Noah Gregson, Eric Jones, myself and William Byron your top five right now Byron's had a very strong regular season here in that number 88 car 
for Earnhardt Johnson Racing now as we go down into turns one now as all of a sudden I just could not launch there after getting into the back of the one of Gregson trying to push him and we lose a ton of momentum through turns one and two Stenhouse, Daniel Suarez, the 43 of Eric Almarola, they're all going to go past on the inside, Ryan Blaney moves up into P8 and as it stands right now Blaney is in the playoffs over Austin Sindrick now as we go down this back stretch. this could be Ryan Blaney's Penske ride on the line here, if he misses the playoffs this season and you could very well see him on the way out at Penske at the end now as we come through actually making a three wide with Blaney and Matt DiBenedetto there that was a bit of a close call but we make it work here down this front straightaway coming down into the triangle to come through and complete this first and opening lap of this third and final stage now is this uh, three wide to the outside was not a good call so I get right in behind that 12 of Blaney after he was able to clear me there as I just dropped down in front of that 20 of Christopher Bell here as we come through the center of one and two now the 95 of Derek Krause up the inside the final time you're seeing this 95 Levine family racing team at Daytona now as I decided to shut that team down just like they did in real life and they will be transitioning to a second 2311 car with Krause actually still behind the wheel but in the number 45 instead of 95. Now that 2311 has proven that they can be a playoff contender, they decided to make that upgrade to two cars for next season. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, this dynamic duo between Bubba Wallace as well as Derek Krause and who can outperform one another and potentially still, as 2311 looks for that first win in their career, it's going to be interesting to see who can actually pull that off first now as we come through down into turns one. You can see this outside line not working whatsoever, led by Corey LaJoy right now. Suarez was three wide with Blaney as well as the 51 of Joey Gacyers. I was trying to let Suarez in. To turns too but it really didn't quite work and that ended up next thing you know being in between Suarez and Priest but then we settle in behind that 21 of Priest with Hamlin uh, helping me from behind there so we get down to that bottom and Suarez settles into that second lane here uh, as I will have an announcement about Daniel Suarez in the career mode coming here soon there's I got a big one to the back of the 21 of Ryan Priest up to turns four with 10 to go he nearly goes around but makes a great save down the front straight away so we continue on our way we lost quite a bit of momentum from that in uh, incident right there but now with nine laps to go we're just giving it everything we got to try and get to the back of or to the front of this pack here but then the caution actually comes out now with nine to go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out front as we continue to run here outside of the top 10 in P13 so this could be the final restart of the day as you look at Cole Custer down in 40th he was actually the reasoning for the caution now as he still had a chance somehow to point his way in but that has of course come to an end as he is DNFing from this race so day over and playoff chances over for Cole Custer here in his final season with that 41 car at Stuart Haas Racing. As we get ready to go green as well, you see the 12 of Ryan Blaney right here on the row in front of me in P12, and Austin Cindric was really nowhere to be found, so as it stands right now, Ryan Blaney will advance into the playoffs here for Penske, the only Penske driver to not win this season, and that's not saying a whole lot because his Penske teammates Logano and Kozlowski really haven't done much either. Brad Kozlowski in the last two seasons so far only has one win. That was uh, came earlier this season now uh, as we go down into turns one and two. The 47 of Stenhouse out front. If Ricky Stenhouse Jr. wins this race. He does not get into the playoffs. He is down in like 37, 38 or something like that in the points. So if he wins tonight, this will not affect anything here. But if that McLaren who's up in the mix of Eric Jones wins, it changes everything here as we make a three wide with Ryan Priest down into turn three. William Byron falling down the order now on the outside. Not a whole lot of help. The organization on the inside was just so much better than that outside is LaJoy. He moves up to the top. I send it to the bottom here. And now all of a sudden after a great restart we're up to P5 there as I get way into the back of the 95 of Krauss, nearly turn him around through the triangle. Fortunately, that doesn't turn into anything there as we continue side by side. Now, as the 14 of Briscoe decides to move up to the top, that would be a terrible call because when we went down into turn three, we made a three wide with him and LaJoy, and it ended up passing them both and moving now up into P4. So now only four laps to go in the race. Once we cross the line there, as I now look to the inside of Derek Krause, we have a huge run through the triangle, and I decided, you know what, we just got to take this run here to the outside of the 0-2 McLaren of Eric Jones and trying to maybe steal a win here in Daytona, but the run would die right here when I had zero help, and all of a sudden, here comes the 95 of Krause absolutely hauling by on the inside there as I was looking for an opportunity to get back to, down to the bottom and sure enough I was able to make that happen here as we would get a bunch of help from Denny Hamlin and sure enough on lap 37 we would actually get back past that 95 of Krause. Unfortunately Hamlin got stuck behind him so I did not have any more help from that 11 car but we came through to two laps to go and we actually had three cars organized here on the top I was trying to make work uh, and then that ended up uh, getting destroyed once again so in the turns one I dropped back down to the bottom but now Tyler Reddick as we were approaching the final lap 
gap here in Daytona was my drafting partner and I was trying to leave a big gap because we weren't really able to make anything happen here with Eric Jones and Steno. So I'm trying to leave a big gap to get a really big run down the back straightaway and make one last charge for a potential victory here as Stenhouse leads the way through turns one and turns two and Eric Jones in a must win to get into the playoffs is right behind him now as we are full throttle at this point with a big draft now as we go down this back straightaway. Stenhouse on the top, Jones in the middle and look to the inside of Eric Jones here on the final lap. Down into turn three, is it going to be enough to get to the inside of the 47? No it is not. Side by side with Jones now who's actually going to side draft me on the exit of turns four. Pull us both back and that allows the 47 of Stenhouse to get away down the front straightaway. Side drafting now Jones back like he did to me as Stenhouse wins in Daytona. We come through to cross the line there for P3 as Jones just barely hangs on now as the regular season comes to an end and now the big question is who finished better Ryan Blaney or Austin Cindric? I looked through the order not seeing anyone's name yet which was getting more nerve-wracking as we were scrolling through there it is Blaney P26 and sure enough he beats Cindric by more than two positions as he would finish in 32nd which means Ryan Blaney advances to the playoffs and overtakes his teammate of Austin Cindric nearly a uh, nearly an iconic choke for Ryan Blaney there as he was up by like 70 points over Centric with like three or four races left in the regular season. So we will check out that playoff grid here in just a moment. But here you see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with the victory, but he is down in 37th in the standings. Now, as we look at the Xfinity Series grid, nothing changing there, of course. But Quinn Health remains in that must-win situation if he wants to advance into the playoffs here. So he's only got two regular season races to do that, I think it said now. And then we start the playoffs next episode at Darlington, where we are P1 there in the playoff grid. 43 points above the cut line, Burton 32, and then really everybody uh, after that from Kyle Busch on down is not very safe at all there as you see Matt DiBenedetto the last one in Elliott the first one out Byron Bubba Wallace and Ryan Blaney uh, your four drivers on the outside looking in as we get ready to start the playoffs here in the next episode at Darlington as always if you guys enjoyed you know what to do I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode uh, and before we end it I would just like to say a quick thank you to the going racing members on the channel MJ uh, Joseph 9001 RJ Timothy A Bubba Jr King Matt uh, XL a new member to the channel as well as Brett Durward, Dark Gengar Gaming, and AJ Vasura. As I always say, I really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I'll see you guys though in the next one for the start of the playoffs at Darlington. Have a great day, everybody.